The next question, Dr. Nabil from Kashmir, he asks, why are some people born with congenital defects? If this is a test for the parents, then why are non-Muslim and atheist parents tested, especially the non-Muslim parents? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Mulk chapter number 67 verse number 2, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you are good in deeds. So this life, it is a test for the hereafter. And based upon our deeds, based upon our actions, we will be rewarded or punished in the hereafter. So certain people are tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 155 وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ الصَّابِرِينَ And we shall surely test you with something of fear and hunger and some loss of lives and wealth. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tests the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. And even if the children, they have certain diseases, it is a test for the parents. Will they yet be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are they content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? Even the non-Muslim parents, it is a test for them. Will they believe in one God alone? Will they embrace Islam? Will they be content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if they embrace Islam, if they are content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their reward will be greater in the hereafter. Because the greater the test, the greater the reward. And just because a person has a disease, maybe a congenital heart disease or any other disease, that does not make him a lesser human being. That does not mean that he is a less righteous person. Even if a person has a disease, he can yet enter paradise. And it is better for a person to enter paradise with a disease rather than entering hellfire without having a disease. So it is all based upon how you look at it. Because for us believers, the prime goal, it is the hereafter. This life it is temporary, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 verse number 185, Kullu maut, Every soul shall have a taste of death. So every person he will eventually die. This worldly life it is going to end. The home of the hereafter, it is everlasting and it is eternal. So we should prepare for the home of the hereafter. And the criterion for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is taqwa, it is God consciousness. Even if a person he has a disease, he may not have a leg, he may not have a limb, etc. But in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can be greater if he is a righteous person, if he has iman, if he has taqwa. And it reminds me of an incident of a person who did not have his hands and legs. And he was blind. And he was continuously reciting the adhkar. That is, he was remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, continuously reciting it. And he was thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, some people, they passed by him and they asked him that you do not have your legs, you do not have your hands, you are blind, yet you are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, he says that at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me a tongue wherein I can praise him. I can do adhkar, I can recite the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the iman of this person. Even though he has lost his limbs, he is blind, but yet he is content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we all know and we all should strive for the afterlife. This life, it is only temporary and the home of the hereafter, it is everlasting and it is eternal.